Welcome back to Hashtag Entrepreneurship Tuesday right here on Y in the morning at Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media platform at Michelle Ashira is where you can reach out to me. So in this particular session, uh, we look at information technology. This is an interview that we're about to just jump into it. So we're looking at information technology in business and the bigger picture, we all know that uh, techno technology is essential part of every business today. So every business needs to invest in technology uh, to just have a better opportunity when it comes to uh, do more in business. So in studio, we have a team from a company known as Other Side. Uh, joining us right now is the founder and lead engineer, lead software engineer, Ian Mungai, and none other than Nixon. Maruga, who is the head of marketing. Thank you very much for guys, for you guys creating time to be here. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. How are you doing? How are you doing this morning? Fine, thank you. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'm doing okay, you look good. Ah, oh, thank you very much, and you guys, gentlemen, are looking very much dashing. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, much quicker. Let's say they are casual, Kiasi. <laughs> yeah, I like it this way. I'm more comfortable. <laughs> All right, Nixon. So maybe we could just start it off uh, in uh, by just telling us a little bit of a background story of uh, uh, who Ian uh, Mungai is before he became a software developer. Where did yeah. you grow up? What's the story? Yeah, uh, Ian Mungai is a small town boy from Eldoret mm -hmm. who grew up playing with the computers his whole life. So. My whole life, I've always wanted to know what can I do with the technology. And uh, from there, I grew and grew, and I'm here now building software for my clients. All right. Yeah. What about you, Nixon? Mm, Where did never. you grow up? I grew up in Eldoret. <laughs> Actually, oh, okay. we were neighbors. Interesting. Went to the same primary, mm -hmm. but I wasn't that much of a computer guy. Yeah. I could go watch and play games, and I, I was comfortable just sitting and watching. Okay. I loved being outdoors and all that. Yeah. All right. yeah. More of a social person, yeah, I say. Yeah. <laughs> so for you, Ian, uh, growing up, did you, uh, did you have an influence, probably from your parents or just your environment, where it made it, like propelled you to think about starting your own business in the near future, which the future is right now? Yeah. Uh, growing up, I remember my, my late grandfather, he bought a computer for me when I was maybe in class one. And I was so interested in how it worked. Uh, the bad part about those days, there was no internet. But I learned a lot from that simple computer. And uh, as we progressed, I learned how to build software, small programs whereby I can uh, use them in our day-to-day -day processes. And from there, my, uh, my uncle is the first person who actually gave me a job. He told me uh, he, he was selling uh, Bamba TV. Uh, uh, set boxes. Okay. Yeah, so when he was selling them, he needed a way to manage how he was selling the business. And that's how I built my first program. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, Nixon. Uh, for me, <laughs> <laughs> okay, the school I went to, mm. we had computer classes. That's high school? No, primary. Okay. So for me, I was the guy in the computer lab. The mm -hmm. teacher is teaching exam, he's teaching MS Word, I'm playing IC Tower, Mario. <laughs> People thought I wasn't serious with computers, but I was serious with other things. Ah. Yeah, I didn't know I would later in life connect with computers again. Mm -hmm. Were you smart in high school? Very smart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and yeah. So, and for someone, anyone approaches mm -hmm. you and asks you, um, what is software development? Yeah. Uh, Using so simple term ever. <laughs> simplest terms. Yes. Software development is a process of uh, creating uh, processes, mm -hmm. uh, the process of creating uh, uh, software okay. whereby users can use things to simplify their business and how they work and interact with applications. What was the journey like uh, for you guys starting the company other side? Uh, considering that uh, Nixon and you uh, were neighbors back in the day, so uh, yeah. what was the journey like starting other side? Yeah, so uh, back in university, uh, we, were, we were broke. 
can't deny. We need money to, to do things. Mm -hmm. So using my knowledge of building software, I started uh, building small websites pro bono for, for people around. And uh, the problem was I didn't know how to talk to to people and clients. Mm -hmm. That's how, that's where Nixon comes in, mm. in interacting with clients. Okay. So Nixon knows how to talk to people, and me, I do the technical stuff. All right. Yeah. Nixon. Yes. <laughs> Our marketer. <laughs> I would like to find out, uh, what did you see in this particular company, or even the idea that Ian had, and you felt so much confident in it, and you just felt like, I'm just going to jump into it, and we're going to be a team uh, in other side and uh, initial stages of the company. What ro what role did you play when it comes to marketing? So, <clears throat> for me, uh, Ian, when Ian approached me, he was like, "Hey, Nixon, I'm starting a company. Mm -hmm. It's called Other Side." I'm like, "Why the name Other Side?" So, like, people were like, "Why Nixon and all that?" Mm -hmm. But for me, I know Ian. We've grown up together. I can trust it. You know, in business, when you can trust someone, then you can dedicate your effort, time, and money. Mm -hmm. So Ian approached me, and since he's a person I can trust, I was like, why not? And at that time, I was still at school. I was doing water engineering. So water engineering and software are two different things. So Ian comes with the idea, and, and I'm a diverse person, and I'm this guy will jump to any bad and I'll be like, let's try. Let's, let's try the roller coaster and see where it takes us. And that's how it started. Okay, so another important question <laughs> that has just come up from what Nixon said, looking at his background as uh, studying what engineering? Yeah. <laughs> and now he's into a, a tech company. Yeah. What sort of background does one uh, require to be, to be a software developer? Yeah, uh, to be a software developer, you require uh, a computer science degree, or mm -hmm. maybe you go to a coding boot camp, or just learning through the internet. Because a lot of what uh, the knowledge I have today, mm -hmm. I learned by going online. YouTube is your best friend. Those uh, blogs are your best friend. Make sure you interact with them. Make sure every day you're learning new things because software development grows each and every day. Whatever you did last year is not as relevant as it will be this year. And that's why you need to grow and grow and continue to learn. Because uh -huh, yeah. in the process you're also mm. uh, being part of the society by solving problems yeah. through software de oh. development. Yes. <laughs> For me, I'll say it's interest. Uh -huh. yeah. Like if you have the interest, then you can have the urge to look for the skills. Mm -hmm. So for me at first, I was just limited to being customer care and marketing. But with time, I've grown my interest in mm -hmm also trying to understand what is Ian doing you know yeah so for me I'll say interest is what is pushing me and giving me the urge to push on and mm. try harder each and every morning when I wake up okay uh, still on you Nixon yes. <laughs> so you've told you've told us that you've grown interest in software development and I would like to find out Ian has taught you how to code did you learn in, uh, did you learn, uh, in the job or are you just stuck? You decided like, marketing is my thing. No, no, no. Uh, at the moment, you have mm -hmm. to be diverse. Mm -hmm. Whatever you like is not whatever will feed you. So for me, I might be in love with the maths and everything, mm -hmm. but Ian has given me a new interest. He's shown me like, if you can understand the numbers, mm -hmm. you can also understand the mm -hmm. algebra, uh, those logarithms they are using and stuff. So he's teaching me but at a, at, a, at a pace that even a small baby can understand, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, for yeah. you, Ian, uh, mm -hmm. has school done justice when it comes to teaching you how to code or did you learn in the job? Yeah, I can see uh, university teaches you like 5% of what you actually come to do in the job. Mm -hmm. Because uh, in software development, coding is not everything you need. You need to understand processes. You need to understand how to to engage with your clients because a lot of uh, the main challenges we face mm -hmm. as a software company is the requirement face, understanding what the client wants. Because we, you may go, someone tells you wants this, then you go and build something totally different because of that uh, misunderstanding of the client. Yeah. And how do you cope with that? Uh, we make sure we have vigorous meetings with our clients before we start engaging 
any processes of uh, development. Yeah. Okay. So during early stages of uh, other side, uh, the company, how did you guys uh, get your first clients? <laughs> our first client mm -hmm. was through a referral. Mm -hmm. So one of our friends saw we were posting on our WhatsApp status. Mm -hmm. And they're like, hey, baby, what do you do? We were like, we build websites and softwares. Mm -hmm. Then she was like, I have a job, can we meet? <laughs> and I, was, I told her, and Ian was like, who? I told, her, I told him the name and we went. Mm -hmm. And from there, things started. Okay. It has not been an easy journey, but yeah. at least things took off. Oh, okay. Uh, so when you guys started, Kasema to Vizuri, you started off from a place where back in campus you guys were broke, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, we were all broke once upon a time back in campus. So um, I would like to find out how did you raise uh, your initial capital and uh, how much is it? For, and with the tools that you were required when, you st when starting the company, yeah. Okay. Uh, when starting a software development company, mm -hmm. I think the first thing you need is a laptop. Absolutely. <laughs> you need a laptop. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're maybe developing applications mm -hmm. for mobile phones, you need also a mobile phone. Okay. And uh, those are what you need first in terms of developing the software. In terms mm -hmm. of uh, the legal processes, you need to have your company registered to make sure that you take care of the big man in terms of taxes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that's not that is what we didn't know. That was the process we didn't know how to how to uh, tax what you've been doing, how to uh, price the software. That is a very key thing in terms of uh, engaging with the clients because mm -hmm. you might go and overprice or underprice the software that you want to develop for the person. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, for me, <coughs> for me to raise capital, I decided to check on my spending. And my income. So in order to save, I needed to know how much I'm using and how much I'm making. I wasn't making much. Like, so I used to make sure I know how much I'm making. So for me to save, I started like uh, taking, like I started checking my, my expenses and my income. So through that, I, the extra that I made, that's what I put towards the company. And that's how we got our first and because we already had our laptops and everything, we didn't mm. need so much capital to start. We only needed a small amount of money for mm. marketing. Okay, Ian. Yes. Uh, young people are watching right now, and uh, most definitely, uh, you they would like to be here, or rather, the people who are interested in software development, right? Mm. So right now, like us to look at other side, your company. Be very much comfortable to tell us uh, the services that other side offers. Yes, uh, other side uh, offers web site development. Mm -hmm. We also offer application development, both iOS and Android. We also offer data analytics and uh, uh, normalization for our clients. And lastly, we offer uh, branding mm -hmm. and uh, small graphic design, which we may also outsourced to clients. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. Uh, Nixon. Yes. Uh, I know you're so much stuck. Uh, not, uh, you're not using the word stuck because you said it's, it's important to be versatile. Yes. <laughs> I know you're much into marketing, right? Uh -huh. But I would like to find out because you, you're still into software de development, right? Yeah. I'd like to find out what is the difference between uh, web developer and a software developer because these are terms that most okay. of the time they so just web confusing uh -huh. uh, basically web development is websites the normal websites that we see online okay but software development mm -hmm. uh, you as michelle you can come to me nixon mm -hmm. i have a shop mm -hmm. how can you create for me a pos system and a management system okay. that's interlinked for my business mm -hmm. you know where you can control your stock and all that. So that's why software software is more customized applications that simplify your work. Mm -hmm. Then websites are a place where you display your your products, where you can also display which are on the world, world wide web, right? Yeah. Oh, and that's why now we have the web designer yeah. who holds the creative part, yeah. uh, over decorator on display and everything else. Okay. Yeah. 
what does the life of a software developer look like because <laughs> Yes, most of us out here, we see you guys uh, probably in a corner in a hoodie, you know, be like all day stuck on your laptop, yeah. your computer, or even your phone. So what does a day look like for a software developer? Uh, I can see that the movie is live. <laughs> <laughs> we are just normal people with okay. normal lives. But uh, we tend to be more uh, to ourselves because software development requires a lot of mental uh, strength because you have to make sure that you develop processes that encompasses the client's needs so you have to make sure that when you're coding during the day you are by yourself making sure that you go through the processes that are required to develop software yeah mm -hmm. okay. so i'm um, going to no, it, it's just a normal, <laughs> it's normal too, because most of the day you are planning what to do. Mm -hmm. Once you've planned uh, what to do, maybe for a client who wants a website, you start by brainstorming ideas that he needs. Mm -hmm. So you start by designing his website, simply maybe using Adobe XD or other tools such as Figma Online. Then you start the actual implementation and design. That is where by you start by coding the website. Oh, right. Yeah, so it just requires you to be maybe on your own, take some time off, and start working. <laughs> so you guys are just being on your own element. Yes, you have to <laughs> actually be on your own because uh, maybe you have some interactions during the day, making sure that you are not building something that is not what <laughs> the client needs or is up to mm -hmm. up to par to the requirements that you are given. Okay. Yeah, so that's where you have interactions with other people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So this, uh, the next question is best uh, mm -hmm. uh, going to you, Nixon. Yeah. So let's look at the funding perspective, right? Uh -huh. So how do you guys evolve the business? Like uh, your company's source of revenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so for us, for our company, uh, the good thing with us is everything we need like we only need a computer okay. and a phone to test. Absolutely. And that's what our parents gave us mm -hmm. while we were joining campus. They told us take this, and <laughs> like they didn't tell us take this, take this, but mm -hmm. they gave us the laptops. So once we had a laptop and phones, that's one step, and that's the bigger expense. Then the rest you have to invest in your, in your intellectual capacity. Mm -hmm. That's they paid for us the school fees. Okay. So with the computer and the laptop and the dedication we had, we didn't need much funding. Then the first job we did, mm -hmm. we didn't do much marketing. It was just our WhatsApp status. Then we were paid well and it pushed us. Yeah. Because we had learned how to book. Like through our campus life, we had known spending money without knowing where the next one come is not a good idea. Okay. So we decided before we go on with this company, we have to know. Mm -hmm. how we are arranging our books, mm -hmm. how we are balancing our mm -hmm. books. So once we understood how to balance our books, mm -hmm. it, was, it wasn't hard because we had our first. Okay. Like we were lucky enough to get our first client without much marketing or much expenses on marketing. Then from the first client, we did a good job, referrals, referrals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we'll go back to financial aspect of it and uh, <laughs> we'll see other, other aspects. Uh, we'll go back to that. But to you, Ian, I'll let mm -hmm. you find out. Uh, during this time of the pandemic, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it has become so clear that uh, mm -hmm. business owners uh, need to have a uh, presence online, right? Yeah. And uh, with the continued use, uh, the continued ranking increased use of mobile phones. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll let you find out. Do you guys do uh, uh, like apps development yes. like come up with apps for yeah. uh, different uh, companies yeah. and and if so yes uh, maybe you could mention a couple but not the naming but maybe their function <laughs> yes uh, we have a client who is a is a media company okay yeah and uh, he needed to make sure he engaged more with the uh, their users during this time of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So during that phase, he needed an app to make sure that his users can watch videos, like the videos, comment on the videos, mm -hmm. without actually going to the social media and everywhere, and make sure they had the content on that simple app that we built for them. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, would you like me to state? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> if you want to give us further information, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the client is Indian TV from uh, Somali. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, he needed to engage most of the users back at home mm -hmm. on the content mm -hmm. about their nation at the okay. moment. Yeah. All right, going back to finances now. Okay. When you're starting every business, right, uh, uh -huh. as a business owner, yes. uh, you always... Uh, I've interacted with some of business owners and they're always like, uh, when they started off, they were looking at their, uh, you know, their income, finances, how the business was doing every single month and they ended up uh, finding out it's better to look at the maybe quarterly of it. What are some of uh, the financial lessons that you've learned uh, when starting at the side of the business uh, that, you, that you didn't know? You've got uh, to learn on the job. First. <laughs> My first lesson I learned, mm -hmm. invest where there are returns. Like returns on investments are key. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, there are times Ian and I sat down and we were making ambitious plans. We want to make a, a million dollar company. We want to make an app that costs this and this. Then we've made the plan and everything. Then I'm telling Ian, we are making this plan. Is Kenya ready for this? You know? Mm -hmm. But we dropped it because it wasn't making sense. Mm -hmm. But then we said, at the moment we can work for people, then with the money they pay us, we can do our own project. So returns on investments is key. Then another thing, balancing your books. Mm -hmm. Then another thing is taking the challenge. Okay. Yeah. You know? Like, me as a person, me as Nixon, I know what I can do and what I can't do. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you're stuck between a rock and a hard place and you're like, can I do it or can I not do it? And it's 50-50. That's when you take the challenge. Mm -hmm. And when you're taking the challenge, you involve, is this process, are the returns on my investment good? Is the money I'm, I'm putting it going to make more money? So, then another thing, mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> when taking debts, mm -hmm. take from reliable sources. There are some people you can take debts from them, but their intentions are malicious. Like, I'll give you a debt so that I can mess your company tomorrow. So it's good when you're taking debts, mm -hmm. Or, and when you're making investments and when you are balancing your books, when you do, for me, those three things have worked. Sometimes I will not have the money, I'll need to borrow a friend or someone. Have reliable partners who can support you without any malice. Then, when you make your investments, make sure there's a return on the investment. Mm -hmm. Then, make sure you balance your books. Mm -hmm. Make sure every month you know I'm making this and I'm using this. So, if you have those three for me, they work. And I'm still learning more. All right. Okay, Nixon. Uh, for you, Ian, yeah. what are some of the financial lessons that you've learned when it comes to controlling your finances? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, during this, when you're studying other side until now, I'm so sure you've learned a couple of lessons. Yeah, uh, as Nixon has said, put your money where your mouth is because <laughs> okay. make sure it feeds you. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, was uh, my major course when I was starting was maybe hosting and uh, hosting websites, apps and other likes because when you start you don't know where you're going to get this 2,000, 3,000 a month to make sure that all your clients websites are online and on the website. That's where you have to make sure you have maybe a maintenance contract with your clients mm -hmm. and uh, yeah because when you have maintenance contracts with your clients, they ensure that you keep their software up to date and make sure everything is working. In case they have a problem, you are there to fix it. Because without these maintenance contracts, software is usually fail. Yeah, large number of softwares fail because you as a developer didn't put out the maintenance contracts for certain applications for your users. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, another question that has been bugging me: uh, Do you guys offer consultation on how a client can build a, you know, like their own search engine optimized website, uh, just by themselves? You know. Yeah, yeah. we we do, mm -hmm. and we do offer that. Like, but we outsource. Mm -hmm. We have a partner who's well, uh, is very very equipped, and like he understands the field. We brought him on board. Because most of our customers, like once you've made someone a website, that's not the end of it. Mm -hmm. You know the good thing with our, our job, like our contract with our clients is continuous. We make you the website, we do the maintenance, 
we also teach you the how to do so through that like because of the relationship with our castro clients we decided to outsource someone who was good in that field and yeah we can offer consultation in search engine optimization and other like such you need for your website to grow mm -hmm. uh, is it a consistent or is it on a time frame how long does it take uh it depends okay. with the length depth of your pocket okay. and also with our partner and also how willing you are. you know some people can come to you then when you give them your charge fee <laughs> you give them your fee not they're like no they're not serious so your seriousness <laughs> also plays that role. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. you have to sit down with the client. Yeah, we sit down, we discuss. Yeah. And we also know uh, your product and how it yeah. interacts with your, your the users. Consumers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mostly it depends on what type of business you have, how you want to sell it to your clients, and uh, how they'll interact with it. Yeah. Because if it's, if, when you're doing search engine optimization, like uh, for a client of us who likes to sell tours and travels, mm -hmm. we'll make sure that he targets certain aspects of the users using backlinks and others to make sure that when someone searches for your, not necessarily your website, but something related to your website, it pops up among the top on the page. Yeah, so it requires you to understand your business, mm -hmm. understand what exactly you're selling, and to make sure that you pinpoint the exact things that are going to be searched on the internet. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are some of the challenges that you faced here and when, uh, when starting up this particular company? You know, as the CEO, I'm so sure like everything is just weighed on you because yeah. you're the one holding the vision. So okay. what are some of the challenges that you faced? And uh, you got to learn a lot in the job, but now you can pinpoint and say, uh, these are the particular challenges and uh, Maybe for someone who's watching and wants to get into software development, mm -hmm. uh, probably you can avoid this and this and that. Yeah. Uh, when starting, I can see it was a learning curve of understanding certain programming languages and processes of building software for people. Because when someone approaches you with an idea, you have to visualize it and bring his idea to life. Absolutely. So you have to realize that this guy needs a website, this guy needs an app, this guy needs a point of sale system. And you have to understand all those systems and make sure that you understand how to build software for them. Uh, the second part was uh, how to manage my, my funds, as Nixon was saying. Mm -hmm. It was a major challenge because once you get paid and maybe you, you want to invest in other projects that we need as a company to build, you have to know how much money are we going to put in this particular project, how much will we return the, the money to us or the investment to us, or how much time will it take for us to build these particular projects and uh, how will we interact with them. Those mm -hmm. are the major challenges that we had when mm -hmm. starting. Mm -hmm. um, you have another challenge. Speaking about products, you yeah. have another challenge. Oh, my ch the yes. major challenge for me was getting the check on Wednesday. <laughs> because Fridays are not good. <laughs> really? Exactly. Yeah. That's a major challenge. <laughs> Nixon, yes. uh, you know, speaking about products and, yeah. uh, and everything else. I'd like to find out, what is the next product that other side is launching? Uh, should I say it or should I say it? No. Ask your boss. <laughs> 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 so the next project we are doing, mm -hmm. it involves the youth. Okay. We, 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 are, we are the future of the nation, you know. And at the moment, there are so many youths who are talented. So at the moment, we are trying to bring a platform that's free where all the youth can log in. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say, like we're trying to bring together people with different creative creativities, with different talents, under one platform, you know, under one umbrella. So, like, we are tried with, okay, <laughs> I shouldn't say it. Like, we have a, a, an app that we are developing at the moment. Okay. okay. I shouldn't say it yeah. before we... You should have spilled the beans yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't want you to lose your job though, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. let's, let's keep it on the load. But we are working <laughs> on something. Like we want to involve more people. Mm -hmm. We want to, like, uh, like as you can see, like other side is a new company to many people. Mm -hmm. We want it to be a regular household name. Mm -hmm. So to do that, we need to involve more people. Mm -hmm. So our next product will involve a lot more people. 
not just here and die. Yeah. That would be nice and looking forward to have a sit down with a conversation talk about that. Let's look at some of the achievements that other side has mm. gotten to be part of and uh, mm. just achievements of the company. Yeah, uh, currently we have uh, over 30 websites. That we've since, you run, since you started which is? Yeah, we started in 2017. Okay. Yeah, we have mm. had over 30 websites mm. which are actually not just simple websites but interactive websites whereby users can interact with, the, with their clients and make sure that everything works well. We also have over, we have built over f 10 applications, five in iOS and uh, 10 in Android together. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. What are the companies, uh, uh, this is so often the question, mm -hmm. uh, what do you see the company at five, 10 years down the road? Mm, so, okay, I'll do this. Me, I'm a person with short-term goals. I'm not a patient person, so I love short-term goals. Oh, your weakness. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe in a year or so, mm -hmm. we'd like, like this company to be a whole household name, you know, whereby soft all software solutions around will be, like I want my phone to be buzzing all the time and I'm consulting this and this here and he's making this website. I'm in a meeting in, in Nairobi and he's in a meeting in Eldoret. Like we want... Maybe we want our maybe we want to be a billion dollar company in the next two years. In the next two years. Yeah. Okay, uh, this, is a, this is a goal that you're aiming to, you know. Yeah. Hit very high. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it, we have to put in a lot of effort. All right. Do you want to add, up, add something with that? Yeah. Uh, in the next maybe five or so years, uh, based on the projects that we have right now. I believe, as Nixon said, we're going to be a household. Mm -hmm. But I believe we'll have employed a lot of people yeah. because currently in the company we are around five. Mm -hmm. uh, me, Nixon, a data analyst, okay. an application developer, and a graphic designer. Mm -hmm. But we hope to grow and create more jobs beyond just technology, even manual, even, uh, as you say, more like you, we make sure that we create as many jobs for the Kenyan youth, which is a very major problem in our society right now. Mm -hmm. And I hope that from then, maybe you have employed maybe up to a thousand people in the next five to ten years. Mm -hmm. That is my greatest goal. Okay, yeah, for someone who's watching and uh, they would love to get into software development uh, mm -hmm. industry, what would be your uh, advice, giving also an insight of what uh, the real situation on ground, on ground looks like? Yeah. Yeah, for software development, as uh, I can see, it, it, it requires a lot of interest. It requires you to take things to heart because software development isn't easy. Trust me, it is not easy. Mm -hmm. People, what you see in the movies, people clicking computers and stuff, it's not easy. It takes time. It takes a lot of uh, mental strength and it requires you to make sure that you interact with your clients and other people on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. Make sure that when you're developing software, you interact with the clients a lot. Mm. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, so for me, <clears throat> for someone watching, I'm not the best person to give advice, but this is what I would say. <laughs> this is what I would say. If you want to come into software engineering or software development because it's making people money, don't. I've been on the ground, I've seen, <laughs> I've tried, but, and I've seen, it, de it requires you to, like, if it's not your passion, mm -hmm. and it's, if it's not something that you're interested in, and you're just, you just want to do it because for the money, mm -hmm. don't try, follow, it, follow your dream, you know? For me, I'm with Ian, but I wouldn't tell you I would, I would want to do software development, like, I wouldn't want to code the way he does, mm -hmm. I would want to sleep at odd hours, you know? I want to have my sleep from age to age. Just you know? be honest with yourself. <laughs> yeah, be honest with yourself, you know. Don't just go into something because it's making someone money. And don't do something because someone else is, or will think this or that. Do something because it's good for you. Mm -hmm. Yourself first. Sit down, reflect on yourself, have that deep thought, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. you, whatever you're doing at the moment might be good. So. Try to think about it first before venturing into software because it's stressful. Mm. Yeah. What I'm getting is 
be true to yourself. Yeah, yeah? be true to yourself. Be true to yourself. How can guys reach out to you on social media just to interact, or ask more questions, or even be part of other side? Yeah, uh, our social media on Twitter it's at other side Ltd for limited and uh, Instagram too. It's other side Ke. You can find us on those two pages. If you need to contact us, go to info at otherside.co.ke or visit our website, otherside.co.ke. So, to add on that, uh, today, like, we, we are not good on our social media pages. So, for any... Okay, can I... Which camera is mine? Okay. So, uh, for the youth watching, as at the other side, we need a person for social media for a short-term contract. So you can reach us through the emails that Ian has given and we we need the applications by end of today. So yeah, the job is there and we need someone competent enough to help us with our social media pages. But why, Nixon? Why? You didn't tell me that. I'm seated here. I think I'm very qualified for that job. But why, Nixon? Why? <laughs> Let's give someone else a chance. <laughs> Absolutely. So, guys, make sure you follow up with Nixon. And uh, uh, if you have all the qualification, reach out to Nixon for that short contract. Uh, it's all about uh, social like media. Our pages. We need to grow our Facebook okay. and Instagram. Those are the two Twitter handles. Okay, so guys, make sure. How can they reach out to you again? Uh, okay, first, at the moment, mm -hmm. they can either go to our pages at other side mm -hmm. on in, on Facebook mm -hmm. and Instagram. Mm -hmm. They just DM us, mm -hmm. or they can reach us through info at otherside.co.ke. Mm -hmm. Or I can't, okay, you yeah, can those two emails. Uh, yeah. Or our website. Yeah. All right, and also they can actually follow us at Y254 channel yeah. at Michelle Ashira, and we can give you uh, further details yeah. uh, if you are still not on the same lane <laughs> with what they're saying. Uh, we got you here. So at uh, Y254 channel at Michelle Ashira, at uh, the hashtag to use is hashtag entrepreneurship. Just remember, we have a question for you. And the question was, what makes you buy goods or services from the same person or company every time at Y254 channel on our Facebook page? I would like to, I'd like you to interact with me and have that conversation and tell me the reason why. What makes you uh, buy goods and services from the same person or company every single time? So don't touch that. I'll be coming up with another interview right now. You're going to enjoy good music.